Okay. Uh, wait, who are you? Oh, you are white. Okay. There we go. Uh, so, on Arena, it's very important to analyze the matchup while you're doing your Dark Age things. Because the matchup dictates what you're actually going to be doing in the game. So you have to think about your own Civ, the strengths and weaknesses, and think about the opponent's Civ, strengths and weaknesses. So that's kind of what you want to be doing in the early game. So in this matchup, we have Poles versus Lithuanians. Now, Poles is kind of top tier on this map because untouched farm economy is going to be pretty insane. And Poles really have everything. They've got Bombard Cannons. They've got Cheap Knights. They've got Arbalister. Just really everything that you want. Even your Monks are not even too bad. They're missing... What are they missing? They're missing something. Like one useful thing. I can't remember what it is, though. Uh, it's not block printing, is it? Is this like Illuminate? No, it's not Illumination. That's Malians. Uh, I can't remember. Somebody can probably say. But you always want to think about the monks on Arena too, because monks are uh, such an important unit here. But if we know that farm economy is going to be really important, and you see a map that doesn't have any extra space in the back, this is not a great map for poles in terms of just expanding your food economy. So you can't just play full turtle style. Um, but you do have backstone, which is nice, because uh, poles collect gold from stone. So you're going to want to be taking that. Nice and safely. So, overall, it's a pretty good map. Your first full work is going to be forward, though. So, could be attacked by him, but mm, it's not the biggest deal. And looking at Lithuanians, or at least thinking about Lithuanians. Here, we'll put it on your line of sight here. Thinking about Lithuanians. Lithuanians is going to also have quite a few options here. So, they will have the extra food that they start with and then extra food from their town centers which is not nearly as good as the poles uh eco so it's not really that big of a deal so the lithuanians player is gonna have to go aggressive because their eco is just not really gonna be as good but in terms of the units lithuanians they have more expensive knights but they can go for the lightest lightest is probably gonna be good for them but Poles basically only struggles against Arbalister Civs because Poles Knights don't have full Pierce Armor, so Arbalisters will shred them, but Lithuanians don't get that. So Lith, yeah, I mean, they could go full Monks as well. They could try and end it early with some kind of all-in, but Lithuanians will likely go for uh, just Relic Control with Light Cav, try and take all of the, the Relics because they are pretty good at um, trying to take the Relics just that earlier food that they get maybe the poles farming hasn't really kicked in yet although kind of has though at that point honestly so mm, lithuanians is probably just worse here just strictly worse lightest can spank polish calves mm, is it cost effective though maybe lightest is pretty insane if they get to four relics so yeah um let's see uh, yeah, so you're just going to scout around. You want to find where his stone is, because if if you were to ever go for some kind of castle drop, denying the enemy stone is really good. So if he had stone like here, and then the stone is here, that's that's a map where you could consider going for a castle drop. This matchup, you probably don't want to do some kind of all-in play or whatever, because poles is just insane, but that's just something to think about. Um, yeah, so... Let's keep going in the replay here. It's probably good for you to go for just Light Cav. Just Light Cav Monk. Just try and mirror him. Get as many of the relics as you can. Oh, but he's going to go forward with the towers. Okay, so that's fine. Because, yeah, he maybe he realizes the matchup isn't so good. And he's just going to come forward with towers. Yeah, and yeah, just wall behind. Actually, his tower's late. You should, basically, if he's not rushing up his tower with all of his bills, you can just wall wall everything here and it's going to take him forever so getting this house is correct i'm not sure why you're not building this house he's gonna just get in oh just i mean use use the bills that are closer right i guess you can build on the outside but basically you could have lined the entire section here with just houses and then you'd be completely fine because this is this is five villagers that he's just having forward so investing like what 200 wood into extra houses 
is completely fine when he has five ills not doing anything. So, in one minute, villagers collect like 30 wood almost with double bit axe. So, it's like if he has five vills here and for like five minutes or whatever, you could just say five, five times five times 30. What is that? That's gonna be uh 750 resources it's just kind of yeah if you just don't let him in and he's just chilling out here with five bills it's pretty bad so yeah it's completely worth it to just get those early houses up and if he just can't get in even if he has to go back home it's probably already paid for the houses and then it's just like you have houses and he has nothing so it's just always worth it to just try and rush these up especially if you have bills forward but that's why that's why um that's why the tower needs to come up quickly but yeah where I, oh wait oh you're not even playing poles properly so yeah poles should go to stone um yeah maybe you play random sieve though so maybe you didn't you weren't really completely thinking there but yeah, you want to get that the stone because you get you just instead of having two on gold, you go four on stone and it works out. Oh, I, I guess that did get nerfed recently, though, so, or not recently, but okay, you need to go five. It's mining camp placement. I don't know. All right, all right, it, it's probably okay. It's just weird with the house there. You just have to make sure that you get your guys on the right side. Um, if you have them all on this side, it's gonna be really bad. Uh, okay, so you're gonna go for an archery range. Uh, I think just scouts and go up would have been fine, but I guess you're not up yet. Having the berries forward was a little bit nasty, though. So, usually what you want to do is just still try and get up. You don't want to ever pre-tower, because what if he just places a tower here? This tower's useless. So, don't ever pre-tower. You have lots of bills around, you just react to when he towers. So, um, basically if he gets a tower here, you tower here. And uh, yeah, this tower is way too far back anyways, so you just you have way more vills and your vills are stronger because they're poles um, You oh you lost two vills there. Ooh You're looking kind of dead now um, you, you can't really lose any vills to this Yeah, I mean you're not dead anything can happen at 1300, but still you really want to be careful with losing or yeah with not losing vills so yeah archers can delay it, but the problem is that you're just staying in feudal age. If you can get up to castle age and then just make a castle, then you just win. And pulls should always be on stone anyway, so crushing pulls should never really work because the pull player should just always be on stone and then just go to castle age and then make a castle, clear these all out, and they can take relics, they can boom, they can do whatever they want. Second range is probably not going to help here. I think that just a market and then going up is probably the play. Or even a blacksmith for extra... Like, um, fletching is more important than having more archers here, that's for sure. There we go. Watching this outside of panic mode is painful. Yeah, yeah. Well, you don't panic if you have a plan. If you don't have a plan, then you might panic. So that's why we are watching this replay, is so that you get a plan for next time. Now, see, look. Your tower is useless because it's here. It needed to be... You basically needed to react when he makes his tower. That's not enough bills, too. You need to send you need to send like 10 bills here. Nice pullback on that. But the archers should be getting in on the action here. If you have the archers here, you might shoot them down, but like. You need to go for the basically what you should do is send like 10 bills. Go for the foundation with most like half of them, and then just one bill on each of the enemy bills. So, you're just underreacting to this. And now you're losing a vill, too. Um, wheelbarrow at this stage is... I guess for, for uh, running away purposes is not too bad. But yeah, if you just have a market, you just rebalance and go up. The opponent's going to go up here. Well, I mean, actually, I'm kind of wondering why the opponent's not going up. Uh, how long have those been idle? Oh, quite some time. But, okay, opponent's not quite up yet, I guess. He's having some troubles, too, at home. That's that's okay. But you are down three bills. And, well, even more from Wheelbarrow. There we go. Opponent's AFK. Ah! It's not too bad, but, you know. Okay, archers. Killing themselves. Archers should have been inside. Basically, if you're going to go archers with your tower defense, which is not a bad play, 
you put them inside the towers. And then you don't have to have vills in the tower. That's the whole point of making archers against this. Is to put them inside the tower. So imagine you have five archers in this tower. And then you have five vills working. So having five archers is like having five more vills at this stage. It's pretty good. Uh, but yeah, it really comes down to getting a market. You're still not completely dead if you can just mark it up and then just boom. Or mark it up, you get a castle to like here just to clear out. You clear out like four towers if you get it here. Or these three, anyways. And then you can get mangonel. Like one mangonel or two mangonels. But it's not even a priority. Or you could even TC this and then kill this with the TC. Um, that could work too. But yeah. There we go. You can't make stone walls in Dark Age. That's why you can't stone wall this out. That's why you have to house wall this out. Uh, but yeah, you're going to be up. There's the market. And that is good. Okay, so what's the plan once you're up? You are going to make a stable. Okay. I would have probably put the full work here because where are you going to place another full work? So planning your base out is really important. Especially on Arena when you don't have enough space. This map, as I said, isn't great for poles when you get pushed back because there's no extra space in the back. So wasting all of your good um, farming land here is really bad. These should have been forward here. You could use them as part of a wall and then you full work back here. That's definitely the way to go. And uh, yeah. Repairing this is kind of not really worth it because, well, you're just kind of wasting stone and a villager work time. I guess he does have five bills in here for some reason, though. So, yeah, maybe it is worth it. Oftentimes, people will go for an archery range with their trush these days on Arena. Because then he can just put archers inside and then get the bills to work on, on something. Why not save for a siege workshop? Ah, eh, knights can clean this all up, too. It's not bad. It's not horrible, actually. I would say going for a castle probably would have been really good, though. But that's fine. We're going to be making Shlactalus uh, Knights, though. And yeah, it's so bad that you use this space for your buildings and not just here. Because this is... You need that full works. Now your farming eco is going to be way up here. Okay. Oh, Bloodline's not quite in yet. And where's your knight in the queue? No knight in the queue. Q Knights. Q Knights. Q Knights, it's so important. You don't need a TC here. It's not really that necessary. It's okay, I guess, but... Q Knights, ah, why do you still only have one Knight in the queue? So yeah, uh, queuing units, very important. Very important. You should have like four Knights already. And you have one. And one Knight's gonna do nothing. You're doing too many things, too. The monks don't help you clean this up. So if you're going to go for the knights, then you don't go for the siege. If you're going to go for siege, then you don't go for knights. You can't go for everything. You, you don't go for heals when you're, you don't even have vills that are, or knights that are dead, though. Or almost dead. You go for the heals later. You got to spend your resources on other things right now. Um, but yeah, trying to do everything means that you have less of everything. So, you'd rather commit on just the things that you need. Oh, man. Pulling back the knight was so key there. Uh, you were you pulled back your vills at one point, so you definitely know. But, yeah, pulling back, healing up later would have been good. But, oh, man, can't, can't lose these knights. Castle with five vills seems sketchy. Yeah, this is true. Oh, oh no. You need to go back now. You guys are just taking three hits all over the place. Don't lose the knight, no. Ah, uh, where's the monk? You made one. Oh, he's chilling here. Ah, uh, losing the mangonel too. Uh, you're just kind of throwing units. That's why you're gonna lose this game. I think the game's over now. Yeah, yeah. You're just losing all your knights for free. Now he's just gonna get this up, and it's just such a bad position. He's just gonna flood knights. Actually, crazy. So. There's not too much more to learn from this. Obviously, it's a pretty messy game. Maybe there's a few little things that we can point out, but... Um, okay. There we go. So, you're not completely dead, but... You have no farm space, so you're kind of dead. If you had farm space, you're not dead. But since you used this space for buildings, you don't have enough farms to actually get to uh, Imperial Age. But I was going to say, if you could get to Imperial Age, push this back with Trebs, you're good. 
but you spent so much resource on just useless stuff that it delayed clearing up these towers. So basically, you needed to spend all of your resources on clearing out these towers with one one thing. So if you're gonna go knights, fair enough, go knights. You don't make this, you don't make this. You just get the knights. You maybe make the monastery later for heals. You don't you don't get like everything all at the same time. If you're gonna go for mangonel defense, you don't add stables. You, you don't even need. Well, you had the barracks from earlier, but yeah, you don't add stables if you're gonna go siege defense. Um. Siege is okay. It'll prevent him from castle dropping, and then you can clear this up. But you need, like, two mangonels before you go out. Uh, but, yeah, trying to do both things at the same time meant that you didn't have enough knights or upgrades for them, and you didn't have enough mangonels, so everything just died. Yeah, basically, com commit to one unit. Or commit to one solution to one problem. That's the main thing. So, if your problem is towers, don't go knights which kill the towers, and then also mangonels which kill the towers. Um... Yeah, you just need one solution to each problem. Now you're going to go forward with this. All right. You never want to make farms not under a full work as poles, by the way. Uh, like, I'd rather have three farms around a full work than five farms here. It's just better. <laughs> Crazy castle drop. What is this TC? Oh, okay. You just... Oh, it's just ob obscuring the stone. Or, yeah, okay. Oh, that's interesting. Can't even see the stone. Uh, yeah, I mean, you have the right idea that you need to make the game messy if you're going to come back from this. So, that's good. But, yeah. Pulls necessary to have those full works. They're actually busted with how good they are. Ah, yeah, it's... You got found out. And, uh, yeah, you're kind of dead. And he's up. Yeah, GG, GG. <laughs> nice. Uh, yeah, well, our Lith player did play how he needed to do. It was not the greatest matchup for him going into the late game, so why not go all in? There we go. It's a 1300 thing. Yeah. Commit. Exactly. Just full commit on one thing. And, yeah, you sometimes need a composition, but it's just full commit until you have a good number. Until the problem is solved, full commit on that one solution, and then you work on the next thing. You're actually ahead in resources here, which is kind of crazy, but... Anyways, cool. Wouldn't light a skirms do well versus poles? Well, poles could go arb. Poles could go for um, even obuk might be okay there. Uh, poles have everything. Poles they don't they don't have halbs though. So yeah, you kind of have to rely on probably. Well, I wonder how obuk would do here against the lightest. Um, but. Lightest have low pierce armor, so arbs are, are fine. The panic the Lithuanian will get all the relics. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Anyways, we have two more here. So, it's not showing up in my list. So, I'm going to go back into the main game and find it that way. There we go. Yeah. Monks are good, but you, you can't really go for everything all at once, though. The priority to solve was the towers there so you got a full commit on the towers and then go for the other things all right so we are in it to win it here all right another map well this map's way better than last time that's for sure and as britons you really appreciate having a bit of extra space here i just played a map against britons on the ladder and yeah he had enough space to just Expand a little bit back. If you can get to Warwolf Trebs with some Longbowmen or whatever, you can push anything pretty much. So, yeah. Yeah, we'll do yours uh, after... We have two more here, Blackjack, so two more. Expect Obuk to get savaged. Well, o Obuk and Arb, though. That's what I'm saying. Obuk and Arb as Lith, or against Lith as the Poles, should be pretty decent. So, Franks Britons. Yeah, classic matchup. Um, the French versus the English. And I would say that Britons are pretty good on this map, in this matchup, because they are going to have extra range. They're re really good at turtling. With Warwolf, they're going to be able to one sh or, well, three shot enemy trebs. Franks does have Bombard cannons, though. So that's what they are. That, that's kind of one of their big advantages. Franks have Bombard cannons. They also have hand cannoneers, which, if. Britain's goes for um, 
goes for champions against halberdiers for some reason or something i don't know you could have hand cannons for something it probably won't end up coming into play in this matchup but yeah franks does have gunpowder so they are nice there in terms of the economy franks is gonna have a better long-term economy just with the earlier um the not not long term but they, they can hit certain timings i should say so with the free farm upgrades they're gonna have a very strong middle castle age sort of booming way or early imperial age so er early imperial age is kind of where franks get their power spike in on arena in arabia it's usually like middle castle age where your horse collar farms from feudal age would be expiring but on arena it's more of early imperial age when those those horse collar farms would be expiring but you have heavy plow so you kind of have to really watch out for frank's early imperial age but other than that britons are gonna be shining in this matchup i think so it really comes down to not not getting super far behind in the mid game and then not dying to some early paladin push or something like that from franks franks of course does have the castle drop potential potential so it's not like they have to play standard they could go for some kind of castle drop all in just push castles forward which is going to be um potentially pretty strong if your map is very it doesn't have a lot of space but you have a lot of space in the back so even if he castle drops you you have back stone and you'll be able to just uh get your own castle up make make trebs and be completely fine so yeah you have a really great map um honestly imagine if he chopped through this though that'd be pretty pretty big brained um when you have a bit of extra space like you had walls here i probably wouldn't have deleted these walls honestly because you have enough space in here to get a TC and some farms around it anyways. And then it's a little bit protected if he gets in with raids later. And same with these walls. Like, there's there's enough space back here that you kind of like... If he gets in, you have this extra layer of walls and you just do it. You, It's good to delete back walls if you ever have back walls like this. Or if there's just a little bit of space, then you delete the walls. But if there's a lot of space, I kind of like the idea of just keeping the walls up. So, like, these, I would delete. These back walls, I would delete. Um, but I might keep these up because this is a bit of a protected area. So something like that. All right. So, yeah. Um, in terms of the build order, it honestly doesn't really matter too much unless you're trying to go for some kind of really aggressive castle drop or really tight uptime if you're just playing standard as long as you don't idle your tc don't get housed what you do in the dark age is not as important on arena obviously it matters a bit but overall the efficiency is fine so no criticisms there really another lumber camp up here all right very nice uh one thing that you can do especially with britons is just one lumber camp though if you're going to be booming, because as Britons, you really want to be making TCs, right? So if you're going to be going on TCs anyways, Britons have cheaper TCs. So you, you kind of want to add TCs pretty much no matter what you're doing with Britons. And so you just go one Lumber Camp to start, and then you don't have to spend that extra 100 wood. Because it takes a while for the efficiency to pay off, the increased e efficiency to pay off that Lumber Camp. So honestly, I think that just going for one Lumber Camp is fine two lumber camps is better if you're gonna go for light cav which i mean you still could do but mm, i don't know eh, one lumber camp if you're just gonna go for tcs right away is is fine eh, in a lot of situations so we're seeing barracks from both players looks like it will be military now one thing that britons can do is they don't even have to go light cav. They're one of the few civs where you could go crossbowman opening. But you have to be careful of getting swamped by enemy light cav. So if you can get... Usually you reach castle age and you have four crossbowmen. If your opponent has four light cav at that stage, you get dominated. But if you can get up to like eight crossbowmen, it's really good. So what Britons have, they have the extra range, which helps against monks. And then they also have the production speed on their range which is just helping you to get a little bit more units out which more units equals more good so you want to get more so i'm assuming we're gonna see a range you went range last time too um there it is oof yeah anyways this is fine you'll still be able to go up with plus two no problem so far so far good so far so good that's what i meant to say 
opponent is also going to be up at a pretty good time. Although he did idle for 21 seconds. So you're in a very good spot here. And so, yeah, your build order is good. Build order is very good. Honestly, like, even if I was playing this game, I would be happy with the build order. No problem. And... The issue is once the game gets a little bit... Uh little bit crazy that's that's where it's difficult at least i'm doing something right well i mean you're 1300 you're still pretty good honestly 1300s these days are pretty decent um at least at the well, until the opponent starts attacking you or you start attacking then it starts to fall apart a little bit but yeah overall it's, it's pretty pretty good so far um you are gonna get doubled after yeah this is an arena thing so sometimes you go horse collar first and then get um so then you can get your farms down get your food eco going and then you get double it after horse collar it's you generally don't do that on arabia but on arena it's not it's, it's actually good usually when you're going light cav though so if you're going if you're going these guys it's like you don't even need as much food economy anyways so well you kind of do but i don't know i think it actually it'll still be fine as long as you have enough for two tcs once you're up that's kind of what matters here so, as I said, you're going to have four archers if you just queue one more. Queue another archer. Queue another archer. You don't need fletching yet. You need another archer in the queue. Man. You would have still had four archers with fletching if you just went the archer first and then you get fletching later. It's fine. When you're making upgrades, you make the upgrades after the units because your guys on the field will just benefit from the upgrades. Three arches is not enough, though. Not even close. Okay, monastery. Nice. And where are your TCs going to go? You have enough for two TCs pretty much now, as Britons. Pretty much. TC there. Okay, very good. Where's the other one? Probably on the gold. Right here is beautiful. Okay, opponent's going to go light cav. Or is he? Oh, he's... Oh, a knight. Okay, knights are bad because you're just going to make units. Okay, that's fine, too. You could get it on the gold. You could get it on the wood. On arena... Having it on two on wood is completely fine because you need a lot of wood to make all the farms anyways. So, yeah. In anticipation of a Frank Castle drop. Uh, yeah. I guess that could be something. But you had scouting anyways. Nice. Monka's out. Oh, wait. Oh, I think you took way too long to make this Monka. Let's go back. So that. Let's see. You got it up at like 1530 or so. Oh, you didn't have the gold for it until like 45 seconds later. So you could have already had a monk on the field. Um, and that would have prevented you from dying to this knight. If you had the monk on the field, you'd be completely fine here. So, um, oh, you don't have a market, so you weren't able to really sell anything. That's why you usually, if you're going to go for military, it's like you don't even get the blacksmith on arena. You get either the stable, the range, and then you get the market. Because buying res is just so good on this map. And now he just cleaned up the archers kind of for free. And But yeah, if you just kept making archers, and you had six crossbowmen, he can't do anything. Six crossbowmen with some knights, it's so hard to fight. Now, opponent isn't really fast with his monks either. He's got the monk chilling here. He has map control temporarily, so he should be taking relics. And But yeah. Spending the wood here. Early crossbow play as Britons is A-OK. -okay. That it is. It's basically the only sieve that you're going to do that with. And they did get a nerf recently where their archery range doesn't... It's like 10% faster now or something instead of, what was it, 15 or 20 or something? So, it still should be good though. But yeah, um, as Britons, it's kind of good. It's kind of okay. I think you probably could justify it with some other sieves too, but... I don't know. It, it just feels good to do as Britons. The extra range really helps against monks, and the extra production speed helps you get those units out. Oh boy. Oh boy. E oh, Reds. He's not. Oh, come on. Go. He's not using his units effectively, though, so you're fine. Maybe. If he came right for you, you'd be in danger, but no. Nice. Nah, he's sending his units wrong. That's fine. You killed a monk there, too. That's huge. What? Will you get it? No, not quite. All right, anyways, it's fine. Don't go out. Don't go out. Your boom is so far ahead here. 250 wood in the bank, though. Every time you have any wood, 
You gotta be spending. You just spent on two farms? But why, why'd you just buy two farms? Why didn't you buy ten farms? Well, you couldn't quite afford ten Hope farms, but... Well served. Like, Your content helped me feel better when I was recovering from surgery last year, and I just kept watching. Thanks, Sea Eagle. Much appreciated. Yep, yeah, and I'll be here for a long time to come. Uh, anyways, so... When you are buying... When you're spending your wood, just as a general rule, look at your wood. Like, look at, look at your wood when you're spending on buildings, and spend it all. Every time. Unless you're saving for something specific, spend all the wood every single time. This this should never be above like a hundred here. You should always be sending it before then. And yeah, you can watch what was it, the previous game that I did? Where I was just booming. And every time I have 60 wood, spend the wood. Always look at your wood. Wessex knows. When I micro with monks, I completely lose track. Well, you shouldn't even be really microing too hard here. It's like, yeah, uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Do you have sanctity? No sanctity, so you guys gonna go down? Wait a sec, you got so lucky there. Insane luck. Your guy wasn't even charged here either. That was just a full insane luck conversion on the, on the scout. But yeah, so here, there we go. You're gonna get heavy plow, but I think you should save heavy plow until you click up to the imperial age, just because. These farms are all horse collar farms, and then Heavy Plow is not even going to come in in time. You're going to get all these farms up before Heavy Plow, unless you just get your dudes to do whatever first. And, uh, yeah, I mean, you're 10 seconds early, right? So you have to micro. If you're going to go for Heavy Plow here, you have to make sure to micro these bills away so that they don't finish the farms. You got one with Heavy Plow. <laughs> Oof. So being a little careful. That is not optimal. Unless, you put, unless you're going to put, like, three or four guys in there. Are you going to actually micro that? Otherwise, the optimal location is like here. Maybe you will micro it. Nope. So that's actually just a really bad mining camp now. So right here is good. Moo. M O O O O. That's true. How come it was mooing? I don't know. So there's still a cow on the field. But anyways. Eh. He's got a fourth TC, which is going to delay his Imperial Age, which is great for you. So, in this situation, you're just going to get your buildings go up. And... You're going to get a castle maybe maybe here. You've got some golds here. You get a castle here. Check this area. Adding ranges. Okay. Where's... Oh, yeah. You have a monastery. So, yeah, you're good. You're getting ready to go up. So, I always say 30 vills. Or, sorry. 30 farmers. 70 bills, that's roughly when you want to be thinking about clicking up. Mainly on Arena, but also that thinking can be applied to Arabia as well, sort of. It's a little more complicated on Arabia, but when you're when you're doing this kind of just fight for relics in, in the boom. 30 farmers, 70 bills, let's go to Imp. And then you can finish the boom on the way up. So as Britons especially, if you're going to be taking map control, you might as well have a castle and then just make a TC. And then you have another TC for making more bills, finishing off your boom, and it just protects it a little bit better. So it's really nice. Uh, you, wow, that's a that's a cool play, but it makes the game a little more complicated here. Moo! Brand new way to drink milk. Trademarked. Don't make anything from this. Uh, I guess a scout is probably okay, but don't make anything more than that because you really need to be making units. You need to be making archers, get the crossbone upgrade, because crossbone upgrade makes your archers train um, faster. Okay, so you're going to go into pikes. Um, okay. Wait. Pikemen don't need bodkin arrow. What are you doing? Okay, I guess you're going to try and do two things again. Uh, unfortunately, doing two things as an opening is generally worse than doing one thing as an opening, so... We'll see if it pays off. Oh, you're doing three things because you're making scouts as well. Ooh, you, you're going to have no resources to do anything now. So this seems to be a bit of a theme. You got to choose what you spend your re resources on wisely. You're not at the stage where you just have so many resources floated. You're at the level where, yeah, you need to just basically make better decisions with spending the resources. Armor is such a low priority on archers that it's not worth it at all. You'd rather save that res for bracer or chemistry or... Warwolf, oh wait, Warwolf doesn't, Warwolf is like, seven. it's wood and gold, but anyways. There's the castle, wait, why there? You're gonna get a Treb 
If you get a Treb stuck in this, it's going to be really sad. You have to be watching for that. I should have just been central here. Would have been way better. Waiting for the supplies upgrade now. Yeah, well, watch it happen. Yeah, making these scouts was really not worth one scout to scout around just to see if your opponent has stuff in the back, like what he's doing. But other than that, I don't know. Okay, ballistics coming in. Imp's going to be in. Masonry? It's a little early. Obviously, you want masonry eventually, but it's a little early. Like, you, you aren't planning ahead here at all. So, you only have seven on gold, which means you're not going to be able to afford anything once you're up. And you kind of wasted a bunch of resources on a bunch of random stuff. So, like right here, you want to be able to click Bracer, Chemistry, um, and Arbalister. And guess what? You can't do even a single one of them. Because of just not rebalancing the economy to gold. And also just wasting on pikemen, wasting on armor. Um, you're making pikemen here too, so it's like... Yeah, okay, he's going cavalier, but imagine... Imagine you had like 20 arbs... At his base with full upgrades. And you have Trebs on the way. You deny this, you just win. Because the Arbs are going to deal with the Knights. And then once you have the upgrades for the Arbs, then you start adding in Pikes. Because you were kind of ahead for a while. Gets better with the Treb play. Alright, alright. We'll see, we'll see. Um, at this point, there's no point in even fully upgrading your arbs because the the timing is over for where arbs would have been good so now i would say just go for halbs because you're already kind of on the halb tech you know he's going you know he's going cavalry so might as well just might as well go for those uh halbs and remember at the start of the game when i was saying that franks are going to have a really powerful early imp timing you should probably be a little bit scared of what's about to come in because this is where franks where they had heavy plow from earlier is going to start to allow them to just pump out units like crazy early imp this is frank's strongest timing on arena that's for sure so you should probably be a little more cautious maybe not having the trickle trebs coming in with just like one treb what are you even targeting actually are you targeting what a house um okay do you not know about this ah. oh you don't know about this castle okay when you're pushing forward you really want to have a defensive castle to support it yeah. Um, here he comes. You're going to lose your dude. He doesn't have armor yet, though. So, he has a weird priority of getting plus two attack before armor. Plus four armor is pretty big. But, yeah, that goes down. But, whatever. You have three monks. Switch targets. There we go. Oh. Hey, not too bad. This is actually a good fight for you. I don't really know what he's thinking. It doesn't really make any sense for him to ever take that fight for no reason. But, that was really good for you. So... He threw a bit of his advantage here, but you still have to be a little scared. Um, I would say prioritize Halberdier upgrade. And, yeah, just make Trebs and Halbs. If you have, like, 20 Trebs... Or, sorry, <laughs> 20 Halbs? No, I mean, 20 Trebs would do the trick, too. But 20 Halbs and 4 Trebs here. And you just... You win. Nice. Um... Yeah, this is starting to get a little scary, these numbers. Once he has plus four armor, you're going to get destroyed if you don't have proper Halb numbers here. And you're getting armor, but honestly, Halb needs to come in. It's such a huge upgrade, and it's such a necessary upgrade. This castle's kind of like... I guess it protects his stone. If I was him, I would place it back here, though. It's just a little too far forward, but anyways. Okay... Arb coming in. Arb is... I mean, it's good, but Halb. Halb is... Like, this is going to kill you if you don't have Halb. Okay. He doesn't have Paladin, though. If he had Paladin here... Oh, boy. That would be really difficult for you to stop. Instead of going Trebs, he could have had Paladin upgrade earlier, probably. If he had just rebalanced his economy just a little bit, he could have had Paladins. And if these things were all Paladins, you just die. He's going to try and raid, which is not really what he needs to be doing right now. But I guess he can't quite fight you. I guess if Halb comes in at any time, he's kind of screwed, but... Alright. There we go. Opponents on 143 Vils, which is a lot. Definitely a lot. And, well, he's going to take both of those out, but at what cost, right? He's going to lose a bunch of guys. You're not really patrolling the Halbs in properly, so I think your unit control might need a little bit of work here. And... Just a little bit. 
Let's see. The one Bill Castle here. Okay. So... I think Britain's is probably just going to be in such a good position now. All you need to do is click the Halb upgrade, and suddenly Franks can't really do anything against you. As long as you play it right. So have a castle here. Make Trebs. You get Warwolf, so you just one-shot the enemy Trebs. And yeah. The Militia! Misclick, obviously, but uh, the Militia coming in. Captram? Why? In what universe does Captram work against... Cavalier. It's not really going to be good, unfortunately. The fact that you haven't queued Halbs is kind of kind of nuts, though. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he's going to get Paladin. If you don't have Halb before Paladin, I don't know what to say. <laughs> I don't know what to say. Surely you're going to get Halberdier. Oh, man. Throwing all the pikes before Halbs. Uh, actually, this was an okay fight for you. Okay, so you just... You're just making it seem like your guys are weaker than they actually are. That was an okay fight. I mean, not good, but... Okay, there we go. Let's get how... Oh, 62 pikemen in the queue. All right, here we go. Now you're pumping. There we go. Couple of... I would deal with this first, honestly. It's on the sides. If you go for this, it doesn't really matter. Oh, wow, he's... Oh, no, that's yours. Um, dealing with this is kind of important because he's going to push in. And you have no extra walls behind. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. You know he has stuff here, too. Ah, yeah. Instead of going for this castle, this castle was pointless to go for. You you had to go for this. Stress to having to deal with two fronts. Well, yeah, I mean, that's why you go for this castle. You get rid of this front first. This front is just whatever. This is the important one. Uh, okay. Franks is going to start running out of gold, though. So all you need to do is just not die in the next, like, ten minutes, and you're fine. Yeah, that's a bad fight for Frank's player. Frank... He needs to get to something that can deal with these halves. Hand cannons are too expensive, so he honestly might need Frank Skirms. It's kind of sad, but yeah. Ah, uh, he threw all of his Paladin. Actually, Frank Flair is dead now. He's got way too many Vills, not enough units, and he's gonna run out of run out of gold. So it's like he can only replace his army one more time, but you can replace your army infinite because you have just you're just making halves. So. Yeah, there we go. Siege Ram post Axe Thrower. Uh, well, unfortunately, they don't get Siege Ram, so they're not able to do that. Uh, oh, all the traps are going down the drain. Uh oh. Wait, why are that? Why are these moving this way? Wait, bro, save your traps. What? What are you doing? <laughs> you could have just shot down the Paladins. Okay, unit control is definitely something that you need to do so I think that you you're probably not control grouping your units properly or something that's what it feels like to me is that you're not jumping to your units fast enough early enough I should say maybe Frank's double gold cavalier and throwing action is good yeah it is but he has one relic so how is he gonna get to that he could have tried to do that to start though but y you are kind of right he should have tried to open with that but he he kind of got stuck on the paladin tech Losing the Trebs was not great, but he lost way more gold in Paladins. You don't mind? Oh, yeah, this... He should be dead as long as he doesn't just raid you. He's 156 bills. Do we have Yeoman? Let's tech it, take a look. Uh, looks like no. But it's not that important. One extra range is just whatever. Where's your defensive castle? Oh, wait, you have zero stone. Wait, where is your stone? Oh, it's here. Oh, that's a bit ugly. Britain's without any uh, kind of siege. You need to protect your siege. Arbs up here, useless. Arbs need to be here so he doesn't dive this. Oh boy. Taking back the, the stuff. Okay, so where are these 94 halberdiers in the queue? Oh, they're just... Uh, you just don't have the pop space. Okay, so the fact that you're not protecting your treb with your units is bad. I don't really know why the arbs need to be here. This castle's too far. Oh my god. Wait. I mean, you're still winning this game, so I don't know why you gave up here. But, yeah, I guess uh, I guess it's tricky. This is late game arena for you, though. He was about to run out of... Yeah, he was about to run out of gold. This is the turning point for Franks right here. Is when he throws so many Paladins, all you have to do is deal with this, and you win. You have this big Arb mass. Completely fine. Like, 56 Arbs. You have access to this gold, most likely. Where is, is he taking gold? Zero gold. He has one relic. What are the market prices at? 
they're already bottomed out pretty much so yeah opponent can make light cav he cannot kill you here so just misreading the situation a little bit and yeah this is basically a win though but i think we went over the stuff that went wrong so yeah let's take a look at the statistics here okay he's ahead in resources but that's because he kind of over boomed so the reason he was taking bad fights is because he was he didn't have enough units because he had too many bills simply don't resign <laughs> yeah i love these kind of games though the crazy late game Okay, let's take a look at the last one, which is Japanese versus Celts. No resign above uh, no resign above 100 villagers. That's that's the key. If you have 100 vills, you're fine. Okay, so this is you. So we can just keep it on that on this map. It's fine. So let's think about the map. We have. Two back golds, very nice. But the stone's forward. This stone, like if he gets a castle here, it's gonna suck. Cause you can't take stone, you can't take this stone. Little ugly. Berries are in the back though, so that's kinda nice. You just get farms, you'll never get taken off even if he goes for a tower rush, whatever. And yeah, relics are, you, you definitely have better relic spawns, that's for sure. These two are pretty good, especially this one. This one's kind of awkward with the gate, but yeah, better than the opponents, so that's pretty nice. But, anyways. So, you have golds in the back. That's great. Stones forward, so you have to be watching for a castle drop. If you do get castle dropped, it's it's kind of ugly when you have your stone forward like that. But it's not the biggest deal. Oh, hey, we got a raid from John Slow. We're just going over some arena games. Um, 1,300 levels, so hope you enjoy. I'm getting hyped for Masters of Arena. Uh, okay, so... Japanese versus Celts, this matchup. What are our late game compositions looking like? So Celts, they're gonna have Super Siege, right? So Super Duper Siege. If Celts gets to Siege Onager, what do we do as Japanese? We have Redemption Monks, potentially. That's probably the only thing that we really have because Japanese don't have Bombard Cannons. So you basically just die if Celts gets to Siege Onagers. Towers don't really deal with them because towers can't move. So all that the Celts player has to do against towers is just not put his siege onagers under towers and just make trebs. And his trebs will fire faster as well. So it's completely fine. And so yeah, Japanese doesn't really have an answer to Celts late game composition here. Kataburuto trebs. Uh, it's, mm, it's not really going to work, I think. Uh, in theory, if you had AI micro, maybe, but mm, I don't think so. Uh, so, yeah, you kind of want to not let the Celts get to the late game. So, how do you not let the Celts let get to the late game? You need to be going for some kind of all-in push at some point. It can be Castle Age, it can even be Feudal Age Trush, it could be Early Imperial Age. But you basically need to end the game before he gets to Siege Onager. Or a lot of Siege Onagers. Do Gelts get Heresy? I think they do, right? If I'm not mistaken, they do, but I could be wrong. Um, anyways. So, what can Japanese do? Japanese can go for... Um, they can go for Light Cap to take Relics and boom for an early Imperial Age with like a forward castle. They could go for like Arbs to start. So potentially, potentially Arb opening. It's a little more expensive these days with the recent nerfs, but it could be okay. Japanese, they, yeah, they're completely fine for going Light Cap in the mid game. They have all the upgrades that you would need. Uh, they're only really lacking the final armor um, for... For cavalry in the imperial age so their cavalry are decent decent that's a new builder well uh, builders on arena don't really matter that much honestly bringing the boar this late is probably optimal because then you don't lose as much decay because you have more bills on it so this is how i play a lot actually uh having two lumber camps so close to each other is probably not great though yeah i know you have them half price but eh just get one down here Let's get one down here. I actually like this, though. If you have four bills on wood, you can have them super efficient if you just have two two on each that are ultra efficient. Hey, hey, Mem's here as well. We're getting all the raids. Well, 
We're doing your favorite map. It's Arena. Uh, getting hyped for Masses of Arena. And, uh, yeah, anyways, I kind of already explained what we were looking at here because we just got a big raid from John Slow as well. And, uh, anyways, we're looking at 1350, I guess it's more like 1400 close, close to 1400 level play here. And, yeah, oh, a third lumber camp as Japanese. I mean, okay, we're getting a little bit crazy. Pathing is so cursed right now. That is true. Will you also play? Yeah, my my match is Thursday at 18 GMT, I think, is what we scheduled for. Uh, Yeah. So, what is that? Like 11 o'clock a.m. PST, which is my, or PT, whatever it is right now, which is my time zone. Okay, so let's speed it up a little bit here, because your Dark Age is fine. Your eco setup is fine here. You know how you're doing it. <laughs> you're you're trying to get him with the mind games. There we go. Just telling him not to make the siege onagers. That's one way to do it, right? Okay. So if you're gonna have a barracks, you you really don't need the blacksmith. So think about it. What are you gonna use the blacksmith for here? Blacksmith is gonna give you either upgrades or the prerequisite for siege workshop. Are you gonna be doing either of those things? Not really. If you have the market. You could buy food, which is going to be really nice. So, going for stable and market is a little bit nicer, actually. So, here we go. Pretty standard build orders from both players here. Just 25 plus 2. A little bit of vital time for both players, but mm, it's not the biggest deal. And looks like it's going to be Light Cav versus... What is he doing? I guess he just forgot his barracks. Maybe he will also go Light Cav. We'll see. All right. So, let's see. Where are you going to make TCs? That's the real question here. Because you kind of... You're not really set up to go for some kind of crazy all-in. You're just set up to go light cav, uh, take the relics, and then try and win an early Imperial Age. But, yeah. If you go too heavy on the relics, it's not that important. Because his late game composition just kills you anyways. So, you really don't want to over-invest into, into the relic war here. Because you really want to have a solid boom. He's going forward with Vils. Okay, so he's... What is he doing? He's going to go Siege Monk or something? That's so unnecessary as Celts. This is kind of weird. Um, Alright, he's going to go for a Siege Workshop. I guess he didn't analyze the matchup very well. Or maybe he just wants to have fun. Either way. Siege Monk as Celts. What is this clownery? Absolute clownery here. All right. Well, this is could be a problem because your stone's forward. Remember we talked about those store, forward stones? That's one thing you got to have in your head. If your opponent all-ins you, you don't have stone. You can't make a castle. You're going to die if you don't have military. But it's really hard, right? So, all right. Going to go for mangonels. But, well, his mangonels are better than yours. So, uh. honestly, you just go monks here. Redemption monks just stops this, right? You could have Mangonel to kill Rams, though. So, I do like the Mangonel. Wait, you didn't make a Mangonel. Wait, what? Where's your Mangonel? I thought you had one in the queue. Oh, uh, hello? Make a Mangonel? He doesn't have Redemption with Celts, so... You just have Mangonels, he can never get in, right? Ah, I misclicked. Mangonel, there we go. Imagine you had a Mangonel already. He doesn't get in. You could still just Stonewall this. I would say you need to make a Stonewall here, though. Oh, I forgot about Repair Bug. He can probably repair against uh, ma um, a single Mangonel pretty easily. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Comes down the micro. No. Yeah, Redemption Monks and Mangonels and you're fine. Now he's in. This is going to get a little tricky here. Uh, you have 400 wood though. So I would say you got to spend that. Converted a spear. That's nice. One for one is okay here. Oh, I don't think you got a Magnol in the queue, so... Oh, boy. Oh, but he, he he's using Repair Bugs, so he's just going to be able to repair this really quickly. Oh, man. This is, this is a disaster. Disaster. So, basically, a Repair Bug is where um, your batter... Or any Siege unit gets repaired at the same rate as buildings, which is very fast. So, you can repair Siege super fast on Current Patch. So, you basically can't kill the Rams if you just target it with a Magnol. Because they just get repaired very fast. 
and which is pretty good for this kind of strat but uh, yeah you just need to make some stuff you need another yeah you got the mangonels coming and you need monks for this what you're gonna have as long as the monk goes down here oh wait no 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 oh that was so close he almost got rocks on his head all right yeah you have everything that you need to stop this though your eco's way ahead no problem uh yeah that was worth that was fine oh and you got this too hey that's really good okay i mean blue should just be in a very bad spot now right i don't really see what blue was trying to accomplish here you just need to spend your wood that's what it's all coming back to that is the most important thing in this game it's also one of the hardest things to do effectively at all stages is just spending that wood just always have an eye on the wood it's all like it's up here in the main game always keep an eye on that when you have wood you spend it so don't just spend it on like five farms if you're still floating 800 you need to spend it on a lot more than five farms whatever that is always have an eye on the wood yeah look away for one second and suddenly I have 500 floating yeah well that's that's what makes the game fun is that it's tricky the macro is a little bit tricky here and that's why there's a lot of depth to this game and but yeah whenever you're spending it though as i'm saying spend it all don't just spend a bit like look we, we make one archery range but why not make why not make uh wait why are we even making an archery range i guess it's okay if you go redemption monks and crossbowmen you kind of just win right now we have no exit point that's ah, okay we never want to leave the base anyways it's it's not a problem at least not for a while but why not get like three ranges three ranges a university you can afford it all too keep the vills pumping that's good you have no map control but if you just make military you'll get map control back go up to imp um basically you can make crossbow in here with oh there's the redemption upgrade but don't lose your monks oh no oh no oh no 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 no, no. oh down the drain you got to be real careful about that uh and you need to get sanctity as well sanctity is a very important upgrade because what sanctity does is it allows you to tank one mangonel shot to the face and one of the reasons you bought lots both monks here is because currently they're bugged so that um they don't heal automatically sometimes so he directly targeted the high hp one but i don't think it would have killed this guy if um if he the other guy was healed but he, he wasn't healing so you have to pay attention a little bit these days and just manually target the uh manually target that oh that was good though yes that you stacked there that was so sketchy it's like his guy didn't even um his guy didn't even target but yeah there's the there it is here we go but now you don't have anything for the night no because you lost all the monkus ah oh, targeting the scout no disaster misclick oh but he's throwing all of his guys under the tc so it's fine all right well he had a good advantage there but then he just wasted it by just running under your tc for no reason so that was good uh all right nice opponents added his tcs this is decent pressure from him i guess but how many bugs are there right now a lot this is the worst state that the game has been in i think i think uh in terms of bugs and a lot of them show up on arena <laughs> so yeah that's why i think we're playing on a previous patch for the masters of arena because the current the current state of the game is it's playable but barely <laughs> uh okay so going for imp pro tip crossbowman upgrade makes your archers train faster so it's a really good priority you want to be uh getting crossbowman upgrade as soon as possible when you're going to be making arches because it's very nice to have do you not have sanctity still bro get sanctity why Sanctity's such a key upgrade. It's ah, being able to tank one additional scout hit, one additional light cap hit, um, one additional night hit, or is it two additional? No, it's two additional night hits. Mangonel hit, like it's so good. Wait, why are we adding stables now? So this has been sort of the theme here: is you just do too many things. You need to have a little bit more focus in your strategy and you'd be a lot better 
Sanctity would have saved that monk. Because adding stable here is completely nonsensical because you need to be adding in arb upgrades. But you're going to waste all of your resources on light cap upgrades for no reason. And then you're just not going to have enough to push. And then he's going to get to Siege Onager because your push is too slow. And then you die. That is my prediction. So let's see. And of course, a thousand wood in the bank doesn't help you. Getting onto stone was good, though. That was definitely something that you needed to do. So nice job doing that. Oof, getting light cap and still losing everything to the mangonels. Ooh, feels bad, man. Okay. Too many things equals doing nothing. Exactly. Exactly. If you're going to learn anything from these three re replays, it's that. That tip right there. And, of course, keep an eye on the wood. Always. The two major tips. Two major tips, especially at 1300 level. I see it all the time. Just go Halb, Treb, Ram. What? The... Japanese player? I don't know. If, um... If Kelts just gets the Siege on it, he just wins. Which is what he's doing. He's just making Mangonels. Uh, both players are Imp. He's going to Q Onager here in a sec. And that's going to be really hard to fight. Onagers and Halbs? What can you do? Well, these Light Calves just really aren't going to contribute anything. And they're just eating up all of the resources. We have... Wait. Oh, wow. These Qs. I, I was seeing this in the previous game as well. You had like 90 Halbs queued in 5 Barracks or whatever. So... It looks like you're spending the resources, but you're actually floating, like, 3k of everything right now. Because they're just stuck in crossbowman queues. So, making sure to get more production buildings on the map in this situation. This castle could have been a little more forward. It, it should have been here, and then you should have been making traps to kill this, basically. He's making woads, even. Okay, but you don't have Arb upgrades fully. You need to have full upgrades on these. Otherwise, you have nothing against Wodes. Uh, let's see. Armor is such a low priority here as well. How come we got armor before Bracer? It's crazy. And now we're getting Cavalry Armor, which doesn't actually do anything for us here. Because you'll never get in. Uh, yeah, all you need to do, invest into Arb upgrades, make Trebs. Go for it and hope that it works. But at this point, it's going to be way too far behind. So we're going to speed up a little bit here. Masonry. It's like you're playing for the later game. Afford the armor, but not the attack. Ah, wait like five seconds, and then you could afford the the uh, attack. It's only fifty food more to get the get the attack, and it's fifty gold less. But yeah, gotta put it though. Trebs plus arbs can beat helps you. Yeah, you're not gonna be able to get all of the good shots on the siege monitor. Oh wow, he he did a complete miss, but it didn't matter because. You can't really do anything here. Oh, he's killing some of his own guys, so that was good. And now the Onagers roll on in. All you can do is potentially Redemption Monks here. That's kind of what we talked about at the start, is potentially Redemption Monks could be okay. But you need block printing. And... You don't even have Sanctity. What? He let you get one. Insane. That was a big oof, yeah. You can't push yet. Maybe. Maybe. Okay, okay, maybe. I mean, get Arb. You hate the Arb upgrade. You hate it. Okay, Blue is kind of throwing here, honestly. He could still do it with Onagers, but... Yeah. Okay, this castle does not protect the Trebs, so I don't really get it. Yeah, it's in range of the Golds, but you need to support your push. Imagine you had the castle here. He can never even push you away. Oh, got it. Maybe? Or something? I don't know. Never had enough res for it. Well, yeah, because you, you're spending your res on a bunch of random stuff that's not helping. That's why. Oof. It's so close. You had the right idea with the monks, though. The monks were doing good, but you're not making any more monks. Oh, God. Ah, it's all falling apart now. He's going to go siege on it. Oh, come on, split. You use the split formation. Split formation is so good. There's Arb, but I mean, half your Arbs are dead now. <sighs> Gotta learn split formation. It's just one hotkey. There we go. There we go. Uh, 
It's super sketchy here. Yeah, Japanese have fully upgraded monks, if I'm not mistaken. They're really good. These bada booms! Zero micro. Yeah. I mean, no, no, no. He has one micro. One out of 100. No, 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 no. I shouldn't be so mean. It's, it's like... It's like 50 out of 100. It's like 50% good. Half the time it's good, half the time it's potato. There we go. They don't have heresy, yeah, but that's not really a monk tech. It, I mean, it, it technically affects monks, but it's whatever. <laughs> there we go. Micro is at 800 level. Yo! Yeah, now you know something to something that you can work on. It's not your main issue, though. But a little bit more unit control. Just, just like learning the formations, hotkeys... Making sure that your units are control groups, stuff like that. You really don't need to have six, like 70 R blisters, though. That's that's one thing. You could definitely get by with a group of like 50 of them max. That's for sure. This is totally winnable with monks and towers. Eh, what do you do against Trebs, though? If if Kelts player just goes for Trebs. Yeah, you can maybe fight it with your own Trebs. Not really, though. You both have faster firing Trebs, though. You, Kelts Trebs fire faster. But also, Catapulto, they also fire faster. But then they also unpack and pack faster. So it's like, maybe even? Oof. Oof. Actually, I think you just win this. Honestly. I think he wasn't able to get to Siege Onager specifically. He needed to get to Siege Onager. And then he would have been fine, but regular Onager is not... Like, they're good, but they're not good enough. Yeah, Housed might cost him, actually. You're housing him, doing the house strategy. All you need to do is just add Light Cap and just... You can raid now. I think Blue's dead. He tried to do this weird all-in, which got him pretty far behind. And then you just kind of defended it pretty well. And, yeah. As long as you don't lose this to a big bada-boom... Big vada boom. Okay. It'd be nice if you could unpack and then cue a movement command after. That'd be a great feature to add in. But you can't right now. Get the tech for chonky mangoes. Oh, did he get the... No, he doesn't have uh, Fura Celtica. Exactly. He needs Siege Onager with Fura Celtica and you can do nothing. Except for Redemption Monks. It's the only thing. Uh, he is starting to make stuff, though. You had two two castles or something on the side that got killed. Okay, Blue's back in it. Because you weren't quite able to push. There we go. <laughs> Get. Nice. There we go. Can you imagine the pathing on unpack and move? Trebs would probably run forward. Yeah, probably. Uh, this is looking bad now. Now that he has Siege Ram... I don't really know why the Arbs decided to go melee against these Halbs, but anyways. Who actually has zero micro? Ah. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Halb raids with the, the Kelt movement speed. Maybe not the worst call. Is that going to be a Bada Boomer? Let's see the Bada Boom. One Bada Boom. Two Bada Booms. Oof. Yeah, all you need to do is just press the scatter formation one time or press the line formation at the correct time. Oh. Oh, it feels so bad. You have 75 arbs in the queue, though. So, yeah, you need to add more stuff. Wait, you're not even dead. Dude, your 3k score up. It's not even over. Ah. <laughs> Anyways, you're still ahead. It wasn't at the stage where you lose. Oh, wow, your APM's gone up every single game. Uh, yeah. It's tricky, but not over. Imagine you just sent some light cap raids in, though. Would have been super good. Or even some samurai. You just make some samurai from these. You could snipe these and just get in. Something like that. This game is so hard. That it is. Japanese champ. Yeah, the problem is when siege onagers come on the play and they just... They kill all. I think that samurai could be okay because they move a bit faster. So you can maybe dodge shots a little bit better. But yeah, yeah. Anyways, I think we went over pretty much what needed to be go gone over in this one. Um... Your opponent did some kind of weird play in the mid game. You defended well, and it gave you a chance to push, but you spent your resources on too many different things, which didn't allow you to push fast enough. 
So if you just went full upgrade arbs with trebs and some redemption monks for the auditors, you just win. You just go in and you win. Samurai versus a no micro player should work. Yeah, yeah, true, true. Um, yeah, so focus, exactly. Focus on one unit type or, well, focus on just what you need, basically. And then you will be a lot more successful. 